I thought we'd have more time, honestly, so it's time to cut this thing down. We'll take a look at the back of the plant to see where the aerial roots are, and then we can decide where to cut it. The pot has two stems, so I'm taking two top cuttings. I'll keep two leaves and aerial roots above my cut along the stem. We want to make sure that we get as many aerial roots as we can, and we want to make our cut right around this section here. We got our first two leaf top cutting, and just for some perspective, this is how big the leaf is. I really want to keep this aerial root. It's really thick and it's about a foot and a half long. The issue is that there is a third leaf that attaches to the stem right about here. So I will need to make the cut below it, which will take a third leaf with my top cutting. So if I do get three leaves on this top cutting, I'll just remove this third leaf. It means one less propagation, but I'm okay with it if it's going to give this top cutting the best head start. Now I have a one, two, three leaf top cutting, but like I said, I am going to need to remove this leaf to give this cutting the best chance. From here, any additional cuttings that I take from this plant are going to be mid cuttings. I don't need to be as careful when taking these cuttings because all of the new leaves that will come out of these sections will restart as smaller leaves and slowly work their way back up to their original size. The thicker the stem, the bigger the leaf that comes out. So right now what I'm doing is a little trick I learned from my friend Pete versus plants. You can tell that the monstera is rooted into the soil from many different aerial roots at many different points. If you make cuts and the sections are still attached to the soil, it will actually produce new leaves from each different section. This piece here is connected by different aerial roots. This piece here is connected by different aerial roots. And then this piece here also cut connected to the soil and by different aerial roots. I'm going to do the same thing to this bit over here. Should spread a new leaf from here, new leaf from here, and a new leaf from here. After all that, here's what we got. Two top cuttings, a bunch of mid cuttings. When these go in water, they'll regrow roots from their aerial roots and then they'll be ready to repot. Then you just need a big bucket for propagating. While monsteras are super hardy plants, there is not a 100% chance that every single propagation will be successful. There are some precautions that you should take to make this a more successful propagation. And speaking of precaution, clean tools are a must. These were brand new clippers covered in oil to lubricate the blades. So yeah, the cuttings are rotting, but that's okay. It's not like my partner's devastated that I do this to her prize plant. I just have to cut the rot with a clean knife this time and treat it with some antifungals, twice. And I might just have to abandon water and choose a medium where I can keep the stem out of water. See, it's fine now, it's fine. And yeah, maybe I lost a few mid cuttings, but the two top cuttings are still good. Mostly good. A basic mix for a Monstera Deliciosa is potting soil, perlite, and as an extra, orchid bark. This can help ensure that the roots have better drainage and the roots have more access to oxygen. Just potting soil and perlite is a really good starting point. From here, we need two top cuttings planted together with the backs facing the same side of this climbing pole. With the climbing pole in, I need to backfill this a tiny bit. Let's check out our first top cutting. To find the backside of the plant, focus on where the roots are coming from. They're all coming from this part of the plant. This is the backside of your plant. If you turn it around, this is the front side, it's completely bare, except for the petioles that you can see here. So when you put this plant in, the back side needs to be facing towards the plank. There's one in, and now the same thing with our second top cutting. We've got one aerial root left, so this is gonna be the back, followed by the front. So same direction, this plant goes in. Fill in the rest with soil, water your plant. I'm going to tie this section and this section here to my stake to stabilize the whole plant. Let me thank the sponsor of this video, Soltech. Last year, we worked together when my partner needed to move from a high light home to a low light home and she needed a little bit of supplemental lighting to help this plant. Now, she picked the Aspect Grow Light, which was great to give this plant some extra lighting from above. And it's basically been the only thing that's help this plant 
maintain its superhuman growth. Installation was super easy. Honestly, probably easier than moving this plant right now. Now the thing that she loves most is the warm color temperature because other grow lights, they come off cold and give this like clinical dentist office look and it just does not look good in a home. Soltech is giving my viewers 15% off if you use the code KTP at checkout. Thanks again Soltech for sponsoring this video. Now this plant is extremely root bound so I'm just separating some of the roots towards the bottom of the plant. This will help the plant re-establish in the new soil a little bit faster, especially towards the bottom. Monsteras have a wide network of roots that are constantly branching out and spreading in whatever direction they can, so if you have a decent soil mix and a reasonable pot size upgrade, untangling all of these roots is really not mandatory. Cutting a small portion of the roots back is also an option. Once you're ready, just layer the bottom of your pot before putting your plant in. When it comes to staking your plant, again, in the same way, find the backs of the stem and when your cut plant regrows, they generally have the same growth direction as they did before, meaning the backs and the front stay the same. Any sturdy stick is fine. You do not need a moss pole with this plant. It just has to be wide enough to support the current size of your plant. Find a rot resistant wood. I use cedar or birch. And if you're not sure how resistant your material is, just search the wood type with rot resistance. You can generally get about two to three years out of a cedar plank without sealing it. Once you fill in the rest of your plant, you just have to tie the stems to the stake as it grows. Yes, the top cuttings are rooted and growing. I did switch to a smaller terracotta pot because the plant was still wet after about a week and I wanted it to drain faster. Top cuttings put out same size or larger growth while mid cuts reset and put out small growth but quickly get back to their original size. Check out this video if you want to see how this monster got so big in the first place.